Today, the ever-growing supermarkets and superstores sell everything. They're selling clothes, they're selling insurance, they're selling cashier. You can pick up everything you want in one place. It's convenient, it's just easy. But our love affair with the big boys is killing Britain's small shops. We're sacrificing our greengrocers, our bakers, our high streets, our communities for convenience. We'll miss our neighbourhood shops when they're gone. And I don't want to live in a Britain that bland. I made my name in luxury and fashion retail. But now I'm heading into a whole new world to work out a survival plan for our local shoppers. This week, I head into a sector battered by the warehouses and high street giants, homewares. You have invested everything into this. Your pension, your home, and you're losing 40,000 a year. But this shop is shockingly bad. What is that? I disagree with the taste thing. There are some nice bits here. The hippie owners are from another planet. These colours were actually quite fashionable at the time. I know when that was. That was when Fleetwood Mac was number one with their Rumours album. And I've got just four weeks to bring them back down to earth. We're just about to embark on this road and you're talking about the past all the time. It's not the past. I have got no idea where to start. Week, I'm in London to see a homeware shop. I actually love doing up my home. It inspires me more than going out and buying fashion. With the last tough few years in the housing market, people aren't moving as much. Now people are saying, OK, I'm staying here, therefore I need to decorate. I want to buy something new just to make me feel great in my home. So there's potential for a really good interiors business to deliver in the current climate. Kingston-upon-Thames is one of the most sought-after suburbs of London. It's full of fabulous homes and the well-heeled, but few of them are shopping at interior store under the moon. Husband and wife team Dazzle and Denny have run the store for 12 years. The philosophy of the shop is to have have furniture and accessories in it that are decorative to look at, they're functional and unique and different to everybody else. I love this. You can put things on top of this, sort of all, all derby type things on there. This is useful for perhaps the odd little bit of loose change. Put your perfume on the end and then sort of um, behind your ears or wherever it is you're going to put your perfume. It's quite a sophisticated thing. But the unique stock Denny's buying for the shop just isn't selling. And last year alone, they lost £45,000. You okay, dude? You want any help? Okay, you want any help? Give me a shake, won't you? Yeah, um, it gets very disheartening in here because um, we can go long periods without getting a customer in. Generally speaking, there is no, no money. I mean, I don't get a wage uh, at all. Denny's son, Dominic, is their sales assistant, but with so few shoppers, he's struggling to stay awake. It induces a sort of lethargy. It gets to the point where, with, like, certain days, you see so few people that by the time somebody actually might come into the shop, you really don't want to talk to them. If we continue to use all my money up, we will have nothing to live on. We would not be able to pay our mortgage. So we would lose our house. Probably about five months, maybe, we can keep going for. If it doesn't, if things don't pick up and we don't turn things around. Homeware is worth £22 billion a year, and there's no shortage of places to buy in Kingston. So an independent needs to be very special to compete. See that shoe with the snail on the front? It is just the most hideous sight that I've ever seen in a shop window. This isn't someone who understands home. This isn't someone who has a passion for interiors. Might as well have utter shite written above there. Come in and get it, because that is what it is. I'm not being funny. I, there's a guy 
behind the counter in his dressing gown. Jeez, I've got to go in. Right. Hello. Hello. Hiya. Hi, I'm Mary. Hello there. I'm Dazzle. Dazzle? Yes. <laughs> You're Denny. Denny, hi. How do you do? Hi, I'm hi. Dominic. Hi, Dominic. Why are you wearing a dressing gown, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, it's comfortable. And it's it, cold. Right. Yeah, it gets very cold in here. Mm. <laughs> That's very interesting. Yeah. Right. I'm going to have a wander. OK. What is that? Dazzle, who looks a bit like a wizard, and Denny, who looks like she might have been in a rock band in 1973, would like that. Breast lamps, they just look like someone's knockers. I mean, look at this table. Black glitter, black leather chairs, and black pom-pom baubles. It is like a dirty old swingers party, isn't it? It just actually gets worse. It makes me want to laugh, and I don't want to laugh. <gasps> what, what is that, then? Is it a little drinks glass? No, they're perfume bottles. What person has that in their bedroom? Seriously. And I really don't mean to be cruel, but it's, it's pathetically bad. I don't know anybody that would buy this. They seem to have forgotten that running a shop is about commercial gain, not personal taste. So, how long have you had the business? Uh, about 12, 13 years. Why is it called Under the Moon? Was that because you go to bed under the moon? <laughs> it's just because I like things... I like the sky. I just like the... I like the moon as well, so... And the, br the twinkly bright lights of the stars is, you know, that sort of thing. What is, what is the goal of this shop? What is it... What are you giving to consumers? We're giving them quality furniture at a reasonable price. Bit of style? Bit of uniqueness says something about you, the buyer. Let's just walk up here, for example. I mean, seriously, God, what person really and honestly has the balls to hang those balls in their house? <laughs> well, I would. Yeah. Well, I know yeah. you would. I know you two would. <laughs> I can say honestly. But that is <laughs> some face, serious though. statement. Yes. The taste level is bonkers in here. It really right. is. And, and that's, that well, is... We always have been bonkers. When, when we first started, probably bonkers. No, we don't want to lose our quirkiness, do we? Dominic, what do you think? Standing in your dressing gown? I try to think as little as possible, really. Um, I don't see that what we're doing at the moment is probably more boring than we used to do. Oh. Denny, look at these. <laughs> you can't no, I'm being it. serious. Nice. Do you think these are beautiful? Yes. I'm being really serious. Do you think this is, this is great? I think they're too? nice, yes. Well, it is is not great taste. It isn't. That's the truth, and you might not like that, but that is not good taste. So in terms all of the design. customers who've been to us and bought them in the past and kept coming back and adding to their collection have all got very bad taste. Yes. I'm sure they'd be sadly, <laughs> sadly, <laughs> they sure do they have bad taste, Denny. Mm -hmm. And the biggest problem is we haven't got enough people with bad taste to come in here and buy that. That's the big problem, and I know that's painful, but that is the truth. I have to defend Denny because um, I don't think that, that, that's correct. Well, I think you'll upset a lot of our customers as yes, well by well, saying that. Yes, I think you will as well. But, I mean, they're going to feel really bad about <laughs> yes. coming back now. Yes. So you've just actually halved what little few customers that we've got will have been halved now. I wouldn't worry about the few that you've got being halved. I, it, I will take the responsibility on, which is why I'm here, Denny. I will take it on. You need to have a customer base that is large enough to sustain this. This is not a taste level of a modern home shop today. Mm. The thing that we're all talking about here is that you think that I'm probably wrong on the taste level. So what I would like to do is to bring some people in here who could be potential customers and genuinely get their response. OK. Whatever way we look at that, everything in there is bad taste. I would love to bring an editor of one of the Star magazines down and say, would you shoot anything in there? And I mean photograph, not shoot them. 
I mean photograph, and I bet you nobody would put that in the pages of any interior magazine. No, I disagree with the taste thing. Yes, I agree I with the I think it's individual, and that there are a lot of yes. people who do actually like, there are some nice bits here. I want to show them it's not just me that they're out of touch with, so I'm hitting the streets to find out what the people of Kingston think. Just grab people having coffees and just see whether they'll come and do the Denny and Dazzle taste level test. <laughs> Would you do me a big favour? Would you just spend five, ten minutes going around that shop and telling me what you think of the product in there? Genuinely. OK. <laughs> Right. Now, you be honest, don't worry, they're very lovely. Would you buy a frame like that? That looks like it should be in a market store. What about that lamp? I hate it. It's just awful. What about those, those red chairs? Very 80s kind of very, yeah. <laughs> Miami vibes. <laughs> <laughs> Perfume holder. It's just tacky. Yeah, and cheap gift. I know this is tough for them to hear, but they need to know their market. How would you sum up the taste level, style? Cheap and tacky, seems like because of the fairground. Do you think that this feels how people style their homes today? No. No. Where do you buy stuff from? Probably go to Habitat or Heels. Ikea, but try to stay away from that because everyone has Ikea stuff. Yeah. So what would you expect from a boutique home shop? What would you want from it? I think definitely one-off pieces, you know, because mm. sometimes places can get quite samey. Mm. This is so wrong in terms of design. It's so wrong that I don't think they see how big the problem is in getting this right and rectify it. Well, what are you going to be? What is this business going to be? When you've got a Heels, when you've got a Habitat on your doorstep, when you've got a John Lewis, what is this going to be? Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you. It was um, embarrassing. <laughs> Definitely embarrassing. Um, it, it, it hurts, but, um, you know, we're looking for honesty. We're looking to, to find out what, what we're doing wrong. While Dazzle is willing to take the feedback on board, it's not true of everyone in the shop. I don't like being criticised. Nobody does. Who does? But I'm not good at picking things that I don't like. So that's maybe why she thinks that I don't do the buying terribly well. But for the, you know, sort of 90% of the time, it does work. This is the most random bunch of stuff I've ever seen under one roof that says this is a home shop. It is as if someone has gone out and said, right, you go and do some buying, oh, and you go and find something, and you go and sign something, and the theme is Planet Zonk. We'll all buy to that, put it in one shop, and call it Under the Moon. And I've got to make a business out of that. I have got no idea where to start. It's a real shame this shop is so awful. I genuinely find most of the High Street homeware stores bland and identical. An independent could really thrive if they offered something on trend but distinct. But under the moon are on a different planet. So a few days later I'm heading back to Kingston. I'm meeting Denny and Dazzle at their home to see if I can get them to understand that it's the bizarre stock that is driving customers away. Is that their blue house? Yeah. Is it theirs? Yeah. The blue one? Oh, my God. <laughs> now, let me guess which house is Denny and Dazzle's. Neutral, neutral, neutral cream, brown, blue, blue. Oof, is anyone in there? Wow! Colours plays a big theme in this then. A little bit, yeah. Wow. It is bonkers, isn't it? You know it's bonkers. These yeah. are like gold dust. Yeah, you can't People get them can't get them. They're yeah. acquired taste, mind, but... Well, everything's an acquired taste in yeah. here, Denny. Everything is an acquired taste. These colours were actually quite fashionable at the time. 
I know when that was. That was when Fleetwood Mac was number one with their Rumours album. I'd love to wake up to the sky at night. I know, you're just such a hippie at heart. Who does the murals? Denny did that one. Who did all this around the doors, you? I did. Oh, that's brilliant. Where'd you get that from? Made it. When did you make that? Oh, when I was, oh, years ago on a course. Denny used to be an art teacher, and she obviously has a creative side. But this is the craziest home I've ever been in. The truth of the matter is, guys, implicitly you will be selling this to your customers. Implicitly, you cannot help but do that. Unique is good, but unique, left of centre, wacky, not commercial at all, isn't good. And that's where you are. I don't think we're there. Denny, <laughs> I do not think we're no, there. No, I don't think we are there either. We're not. Truth is, you buy for yourself. Yes, I buy for myself, yes. mostly. Yeah. We want something that excites us and not something that's still no, boring. I, couldn't, I can't sell anything that's, that's boring or plain or... Yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to do that. That would be so wrong. That yes. would be so wrong. You know, we, and I know we, you're not that, and that should bore me too. Yes. But you have lost direction. Yes, we have totally lost direction. Totally lost direction. We don't, we don't know now who we should actually be targeting. You are not followers. Well, there's no two ways about that. But individual style, when you are selling it on to customers, has to be commercial. And I think we've lost that. Yeah. And we've ended up with a business that's just slightly mad. Like you two. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's mad. I think it's quite normal, actually. If you like certain things around you, then that's, that's what you create around you. And I, I quite like that. I'm quite happy like that. No wonder it's called Under the Moon. I can see it all. They're living under the stars here, aren't they? This has confirmed my worst fears. This wacky 70s world is truly all they know. And it won't be easy to make them move on. <laughs> I hope their creative energy means there is some potential. I'll just have to go right back to basics to show them how imaginative style can sell. You've got to be open-minded, Denny. Well, come on, you can get more open-minded than me be... most of the time. No. Why do you argue? No, we're not arguing. We're no, not never argue. Too. Never, ever. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Abigail. Hi, Hi, nice to meet nice you. To Abigail Ahern is one of the UK's hottest interior designers. Her style is as quirky and distinct as Daz and Denny could want, but it's in demand all over the world. I'm hoping this visit might inspire them to find their own new commercial style for Under the Moon. How would you describe the look? It's kind of an oddball collection to describe. It's a whole mishmash of vintage mixed with modern. It's not one particular style, but it's held together with this kind of tongue-in-cheek twist on kind of revamping bits of old junk into making them super sexy. Hey, but hey, fundamentally, hey, it's eclectic. Yes, I like it. You like that? I like it very much. Denny, what do you think? Well, <laughs> you look a bit confused. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's what I try and do, but... <laughs> you think you do do this? Uh, the idea behind it, putting old and new together and having something... Um, mixing old and new and having a shot of colour somewhere. I'm flabbergasted. Denny and Abigail are worlds apart. I'm not seeing too many painted psychedelic clouds on this ceiling. Abigail's agreed to help focus them on what a trend-conscious customer might actually want by getting them to do what she does, put together an interior design plan for one of her clients. I have a client who has a beautiful Georgian house and the next room on our agenda is to redesign her drawing room. Have you so got a brief, Abigail? I have got a brief. That's your brief. Demelza Short and her husband are in their 40s. They've lived in the house in Islington, North London, for eight years and are now going through a major design overhaul. The room they are hoping to do next is the drawing room, which is an open plan room with Demelza's study. They like having dinner parties and want to use the drawing room for drinks pre-dinner. She wants the room to be comfortable, usable, but interesting and different. Demelza would describe her taste as eclectic. She doesn't want the TV on show. This is a beautiful classic townhouse. The client has great taste, but does appreciate a little bit of quirkiness. First of all, how do you feel about this? Frightened. Yeah. Dazzle, how do you feel? Feel confident or do you... Oh, feel... no, not confident at all. 
Do, do you understand why I'm asking you to do yes. it? Yes. You do? Yes, to prove that we can actually change what we do and not stay exactly where we are at the moment and not be too over the top or too outrageous, but outrageous enough. I want you to embrace it and enjoy it. I really do, because I think that will come out in the end designs. OK. I'm really hoping this will excite them and open up a new creative direction. Honestly, they haven't opened their minds. They haven't gone outside Kingston High Street. You know, you can't do this by living in that world. You live in that world, you sell to that world. Well, where we start, I haven't got a clue. Dazzle and Denny have four days to come up with a design for the elegant drawing room. They need to find the right colours, fabrics, furniture, and then pitch their idea to the client. Yeah, we got furniture new that came today. Is so anything nicer than that one? Don't know, yeah, I remember it. But instead of tapping into the modern design world for ideas, they're sticking to their bubble and popping into shops a few doors along. Look at that fabric there. Look that. Oh, that zebra. And the pressure they're feeling is beginning to show. Light colour to make an impact. It doesn't mean there's a lot of colour, does it? I think you go over, over, overboard with colour. Well, I would if uh, it was my head. I know it's not your head. I would do it for this woman. Well, I'm only putting a bit on. Well, I think it should only be a bit. It's the morning of the pitch to the client. I'm hoping that they've seen the designs that Abigail has. They've looked in magazines, but they've thought about their client and they've adapted it. This is a chance for Denny and Dazzle to show that they can satisfy the kind of customer they need to target to keep their business going. Yes. Denny's going to do the presenting. Denny. Oh, I'm starting there. Yes. In the brief, it sort of says you wanted something really different. Somewhere, everywhere you look, you wanted something to see something else. The mosaic, mirror mosaic. Um, it's a seated figure and it's large and quite life-size. And you could actually place it on, on a chair. It's not... Um, sort of um, junky looking is it it's, no, it's, quite, it's, it's very quite tasteful nice, yes. yeah. and inside these recesses we've got jukebox and or a fruit machine fruit machine oh no they want to turn an elegant drawing room into a tacky pub all we need now is the giant screen for the football. Television. Do you want to mention the television while we're right, on this? Right, the television it's all bit here, is, is actually a TV projector so it actually goes up onto the ceiling. For me, this is such an elegant yeah. room. Yeah. It's the nicest room in the house, yeah. so I yeah. wouldn't really want to put no. that one here. No. If you did do what you've said, honestly, Danny, if I had a jukebox over there, fruit machine there, you're bloody right. I wouldn't know where to look when I came in. I would actually just go, whoa, you've gone for exactly what <laughs> turns you lot on, which is lots of fabulous mad things. That's how I feel. Abigail, what do you think? There's a couple of pieces on there which I totally love that you've um, specified, and, you, and your drawing is fab. It's just, mm. it's too itty-bitty. I'm not in love. I, I want to be in love with it. What we haven't done is looked at how people are living today and thought about just this beautiful Georgian room. However, there is a great talent between you two. There is. It's just bloody misdirected. It's worrying that the customer knows more than Denny and Dazzle. They really are out of touch with the world of interiors. A few days later, and I've arranged for us to visit an interiors doyen, who I hope can show them the light. I'm meeting them in a cafe at the start of the day. I've just seen Dominic turn up in a dressing gown with the coat outside. Hi, guys, come on in. Hello, Mary. Go and have yourself a coffee. Go on, no take a sit down and get yourself warmed up. <laughs> Oh, my God. Where do you begin with that one? People think it's difficult coming up with a business idea. It's not the business idea. It's how you make it happen with the resources that you have. Those are my resources down there. It'd be fun if it was a children's entertainment division, but it's not. I have to come up with a home workshop. So, I'm taking you here today to meet the High Priestess of Home. Her name is Michelle Agunda Hinch. She's the editor of Elle Decoration. She is the barometer for what good taste, style, and design is when it comes to interiors. 
she today is going to talk you through what she thinks the key trends in home are going to be over the next year. Are you sure you want to keep your dressing gown on for this one? I haven't got a scarf, is it? You haven't got a scarf. OK, well... Uh... <laughs> you look, honest to God. Take you to all the nice places and what do you do? Get it, get it. I pray that taking them to this style Bible may result in a miracle. Hey, nice to see you. I definitely need one. I'm going to show you what we're forecasting are going to be the key trends going forward. So this will be for at least the next year. It's very key that we've just emerged through a recession. We're coming into a period where people want to feel calm, comforted, and the natural colours that evoke that sensation are your very natural colours, so greens, through the whole spectrum and right through to blues. It's beautiful. Got a lot of green and blue, haven't we? Yeah. But we're underpinning it with a very strong foundation of wood because everyone loves wood. It's something that mm. goes handed down over the ages. And also ecological is very important now. We're, we're, people are thinking, yeah. yes, about like, what can I give back? Some, something like kind of a dip dye cushion because you could almost have made this yourself. I mean, obviously now people don't have time to do that, but that's why just people will kind of think, oh, God, I used to do that. And it sets off like little memories mm. in their head, which is that nostalgia thing as well. There's also this idea that you're mixing old and new as well. The, what I call the heritage or heirloom items. You, you need to get that balance of the fashionable and the forever. Think about your shop now and tell me what's relevant in there and what is totally irrelevant in there. I mean, hardly anything relevant. Anything relevant. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> End of. There's not one bloody bit that's relevant. No. Yeah, when I went round it, you told me I was an old bag, didn't they? Didn't they? Oh, we did. Yes, we did. Those yeah. words. Yes, you did. I knew you were saying behind me when I went. Everything was irrelevant. It's irrelevant. But you see that, though, Danny, now. You see that. Yes, I know, but I need to rein in and find out exactly what my style is. <laughs> it's not your style, though. Well, not it's my not style, style, but my. It's not your style. That's no, why I you're, know, you're but going wrong. What I'm saying is. It's not your style. Got too many diverts going no, on. No, you've got to get into your head. It's not your style. Well, it has to be a little bit, doesn't it? It's, 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 we have to start learning all over again. I mean, mm. I, I, I can see see that. I think we can do it. We can definitely do it. 100%. There is a real challenge here, teaching someone to appreciate an entirely different sort of taste. I don't think there's a problem with Denny and the buying. Um, in the past, she's always bought what she likes. She has to change, she knows she has to change, it's not going to be a problem. Uh, getting it right worries me about the whole thing. Um, are we going to be able to get it right? In the eyes of everybody else, we seem to be getting it wrong. I hope for their sake they can pull it off. I've shown them the new trends. Now I want to take them to a shop that is offering just this kind of product. London Department Store Liberty. What I want to do is for you to create a really individual home shop that's a juxtaposition of great old finds mixed with new innovative finds. And I think that's something different yes. that people will want. And the beauty of Liberties is they do that. As well as nostalgia, some retailers now upcycle, reworking some of those new and old finds by adding creative finishes taking what was a modern sofa and putting that 1960s print on it. This kind of stock usually comes with a hefty price tag. 3,150. Should we have two? Get the pair. But I think we can do this cheaper by drawing on their artistic talents. I just do think you can be brilliant at this dance. So I do, right. from your background, is finding those pieces at the old fairs that they do, second-hand shops, you know, loading it up. And you, with your creative skills, I think can add to those pieces. Denny coming in with her eye and going, right, OK, we'll spray that one bright red. Or we'll just add a piece that, or we'll leave that as is, and we juxtapose it with a beautiful vase that I found. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that will keep your prices accessible. I don't, you're not going to go into the designer area. No. It'll keep it accessible to all that middle market that you've got. I think a lot of people in Kingston want something different, all those women, but it's not going to be madly different in price, but will be different from what the rest of the high street is. doing, yeah. Do you like the idea of that? Yeah, I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, when, when do we start? For the first time, I'm feeling positive. I'm hoping these design and taste lessons will gradually sink in, and we've got some new ideas for the product they should sell. But this is a completely new direction, and it will require a total overhaul of the under-the-moon stock. That's a big buy in there. You know, we're not talking about 
small trinkets. We're talking about a big buy. What funds are there available? You know, what am I going to be spending the money on? Where is their buying money going to come from? I need to look at their finances. Morning. Morning, Mary. How are you all? Yeah, we're good. Thank you very much. Let's have a chat on money. That's what we file at company days. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that's last year. So I'm seeing here that you lost nearly 40,000. Yes, we did. We actually put 25 grand into the business last year. Well, sorry, where are you getting the sup? Where are you supplementing from, if you don't mind me asking? Henry, where's the money coming from? Yeah. It's money that we put aside for you know, retirement that's coming into the business. So basically, it's your pension that you've started to yes. go into. Well, and we sold property to put in as well, didn't we? Yes, we have. Yeah. Oh, so we sold, about that. We sold yeah, property. Yeah, we sold property to put into it as well. So. And that money's gone now? Gone. Mm. How do you sleep at night? You have invested everything into this. You know, your home, your pension, and you're losing 40,000 a year. You need to be in control of this and you need to have very clear... I think we are in control of... We are in control. We're, we're, we're in control of losing money. That's the problem. You're not brilliant on the books, are you? No. So, no. are you any good at it? I flit in and out. OK. What does that mean? <laughs> Where are you <laughs> flitting in and out to? Um, uh, for our, our shop further along. Which we've converted into a hairdresser's and a beautician's. How, how far is the, the, the premises? Well, three doors down. So you've got three doors down? I've been passing that. Yes. Yeah. No, I'm going to see it. Yeah. Treats! Treats! Is that yours? Treats? Yeah. yeah. Is it making money? Um. Go on, get in. Is it making money? Come <laughs> I can't believe they have a second business. It's a classic case of misguided business opportunism. When you start to spread your focus, and I've seen this, honestly, in many businesses, yeah. neither one wins. Uh, can, I, can I just see downstairs? I'm going to build something there. So, it's a building site. What do you mean you're building something? Oh. <laughs> it's a building, <laughs> I can't go on. I just can't go on. One step. This is going to be a good health centre. Chiropractor, osteopath, acupuncture, all alternative medicines. Yeah, we do. What is that? What is that in there? Oh. That equipment? That's a dentist here. Oh, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Who is it? A dentist here before? No. <laughs> How much did that cost, that um, dentist chair? With all the equipment. I don't know, but three or four grand, wasn't it? Three or four oh. grand. It's not funny now. You spent three or four thousand on a yeah, chair for a yeah. dentist. There's no dentist in there. No. And there's not going to be a dentist in no. there. No. No, we've changed our mind. Would you like to buy it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, guys. You could lose your home here. Come on now, come on. I mean, it's funny, but you... No, that was bought probably... ...are on the brink. You... You have to stop this. You're not focusing your business thinking on one business. You need to get one really profitable before you start playing about. And at the moment, you're playing on all different fields and you're not scoring goals in any of them. And that's the big problem that you have. It's madness and part of me could get really upset about it, but I'm not going to because I have to clear this up. I have to just stop the flow, the flow of money that is literally, literally going in that puddle there, down the drain. That is tragic, but it's also their retirement. That's shocking. That's really shocking. The situation is absolutely desperate. And Denny and Dazzle have to really focus and build the one business in hand. Yeah, I'll pass them to you. It's now more important than ever that we sort this shop.
A few days later, we braved the bitter cold for an early start at Ardingley Antique Fair in West Sussex. We've got to restock this store on a shoestring, so the hunt is on for hidden gems at a bargain price. I like this. Yeah, I like this. Ardingley is the biggest fair in the south of England with nearly 2,000 stalls that attract dealers from all over the world. We're meeting up with one of them. Martin Hannes is a top buyer for one of the biggest vintage stores in London and he's going to help us search for stock. Martin's used to doing this. Anything that you think is kind of people are buying at the moment, you know? So we want to look for mid-century things, 1930s, 40s, yeah, 50s, yeah, yeah. 60s maybe? Yeah. We, we can... Even a touch of 70s seems to be coming right, back okay, a lot of 70s stuff. Yeah. So we'll try and look yeah. for things that you just need to clean up. Yeah. And if there's anything that they like that you think is just a dog, tell them. In no <laughs> uncertain no, terms. No, I've heard dog back. <laughs> we're we're fond of the dogs. They like dogs. <laughs> we're, we're, we're really fond of the dogs. But buying like this isn't easy. They'll have to be able to negotiate. Should Dazzle be going in and say, I will give you, or do you ask how much first and then start your negotiations? You yeah. ask the price, yeah. and it'll be, if it's £350, then the dealer might be looking to end up with 300 Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's certainly going to knock 10 15% off the asking price. Yeah. It's packed here with second-hand furniture, perfect for the nostalgia trend. There are cheap pieces that can be recycled and given a contemporary look, and other on-trend retro items that just need a bit of tender loving care. This <laughs> is yeah. the, the next big thing. Really? Yeah. Oh, really stylish. It's just stylish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, I think yeah, young nice people are going to like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. The, um... So how much is that? Yeah, 165. 165. How much? 165. You'll get to it, Mum. Well, you've got to try something. Yes. You've got to experiment a little. Yeah, yeah so I, I it's think worth, it's worth it. It's worth the risk. Okay. okay. Go for it. Yeah. Okay. Go for it, Rachel. Yeah. Cool. But this will do. Yeah. Yeah, it goes to get it underneath, yeah. Just found um, little nestle little tables that go with it. Perfect condition. All that G-Pan style, and already we're building a picture. And when you've got only peanuts to spend, this is a great way to build up some real value. Well, he's paying £50. He's going to spend two or three hours just touching it up, giving it a little bit more colour. He's got to allow another maybe £50, £60 pounds to do that, so it probably costs him £100. So he's got to try and double up. Gets £200 for it, 225 maybe. It looks funny, it looks nice, and they're nice things. Dazzle is throwing himself into this. Are you all right? I am all right, mate. Buying home accessories as well as furniture. Look at the set. Uh, this one here? Yeah. 30 quid the lot. Oh, 25, yeah? Yeah. Okay, 25. 25. Robbed you. Yeah. <laughs> but I can't work out why Denny's so apathetic. Nice and clean. Well, and incredibly cheap. Yeah. Well, I don't know what Denny's doing. Denny's actually just, you know quiet, you know, possibly pointing at something. Do you think that's right? But oh, I think we're getting there. I think we're getting there. He's starting to see. So do you want fit for you? Yeah, that's fine. Right, okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Hey. Okay. Well, it goes with the sideboard, that's the, the thing. I mean, there's a similar length for the sideboard. With the store reopening in two weeks, we need an awful lot of stock. Should have bought about five times as much as they have, but at least I've given them a focus. It's not difficult. But they find it very difficult. So God knows what we're going to have in that shop when we launch. I'm just fingers crossed. But buying stock is just one of the many tasks we've got to address. The new nostalgic reworked furniture won't fit in with this ageing hippie store. So I'm planning a totally new look. My shop designer Callum is here to help me guide them through the new vision. I'm going to start just really talking, first of all, about the name of the shop. What we want to call it is 37 Old London Road, which isn't under the moon or, you know, over the cliff or dark side of the moon, which would be much more right for you two, Herberts. But it is... 37 Old London Road has just a kind of confidence and it's a destination. What do you think? Brilliant. Oh, good! See that? How fabulous is that? That to me is your shop. But these these beautiful. are things, look how beautiful that yeah, is, they, you know? Yeah. And you can bespoke for other people. Imagine bespoking people's china. People want things that feel intimate to them and personal to their home. 
we've moved away from the bland rollout of home style. So this area, uh, conceptually, is the living relaxing area. We will have beautiful dressers, side tables, yeah. dining sets, whatever we want. That looks like all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. yeah. You know, mm. really looking forward to being proud of having it. Good. It's a dream, really. You well, know. thank you. Thank yeah. you. Seriously, this is a totally different thing for us. I mean, I just can't wait to get onto it, really. And we don't you have know. to compete with the big stores anymore, no. because that's what scuppered us in the end, wasn't it? We yeah. were ahead of them at one point, and we picked little suppliers and don't, don't, unknown ones, but... We shouldn't go backwards. No, Let's no, go no, forward. I'm just saying. Yes. And, and that's what put the dampers on it all. I want no more. I could have done this. You didn't do it. You no, didn't. didn't. You Just didn't. I said you didn't do it. I know. So I want, I want to feel a spark from you like I'm feeling from him. I really want to feel that and I'm not feeling it yet. No, I'm not feeling it either. You're not feeling it? No, I'm not feeling it, no. No. no don't worry. No, well, but I do you... worry, I do worry, because we're not, we're not, there is no spark. You know, you normally got a huge spark and, and, I, and I trust your thing, you, the finishes you can do, you can do all of those things. No problem. You're brilliant, but there's nothing there. There's no fire in your belly. I, I, yeah. can't, I can't see it. I just can't see it in you. What can I say? Well, I don't know. We, we, can, we're just about to embark on this road, and you're, you're, you're talking about the past all the time. I'm not. Sod, sod I just... the past. Got to relate to something. You don't know. <laughs> this doesn't relate to anything. This, this is going forward. I think Denny is finding the scale of this change incredibly difficult. But I need her behind this, so we're meeting for a coffee away from the shop. This often happens when I work on a husband and wife team, is that one of them feels, oh, I I've let the other down. The, the, the responsibility maybe has been on your shoulders more because you are the, the creative face of the business. But he deals with the finances, so that's more important in a way. No, because there is no finances to deal with if there isn't a business. No, true. I, I feel that reluctance to move on from you. I'm just feeling it there that you feel, I'm not sure that this is the right direction, and I'm actually not sure that we've got it wrong to date. Guess what I'm coming to, and it is quite difficult, is that Dazzle says he thinks, yeah, we've lost our way. And you're now saying you have, because no, I, I haven't know, heard that have. from that. No, we have. I agreed with all that. I was just defending some of the choices. That was all. Okay. I need an openness from you. I need a connection with you. And I need a conviction from you. You've got it. OK. Well, that's good. I think what's happened is because she wasn't getting the buy right, she wasn't moving anywhere. I think she's recognising the fact that, you know, she's been the one who's, who's felt responsible. You can see it a mile off. With the relaunch getting nearer, I have to have Denny's commitment. I want to show them both that having a shop isn't enough to win custom in today's market. Around here, people are cash rich, but time poor. And I've got a final idea that could offer convenience and bring in extra business. There's a real hunger and desire for distinctive one-off pieces, but lots of people are far too busy to search the internet and markets for themselves. So I want Dazzle and Denny to offer to do it for them, for a finder's fee. I've got customers lined up that you're gonna source some stuff for, okay? They're local Kingston people, and I want you to hear what it is that they need. If we don't have it, we will find it for you. We're starting at the top end of prospective customers. This Victorian hunting lodge belongs to Kingston resident and rock royalty, Joe Wood. Hi, nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Hi, Dominic, nice to meet you. The 3Ds are... Yeah. I love, as you can see, I love anything old, but yeah. I especially, my passion at the moment is old wallpaper. I want, a, like, a 40s floral wallpaper. Right. So this is an old wallpaper. I actually found this one in New York. I love, I think that looks beautiful. So you don't want strong colours either, you want, because it's going to be feminine, you want sort of palish colours? Um, I don't mind it. Could It could be quite strong. Denny looks like she's engaging much more with this, and she's not alone. You could, I've no experience of buying wallpaper, and you have. 
How do you know? Is it often? How do you know it's the age they say it is? Do you? You'll know. If it's well, no. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. The questions like, oh, you know, I've never done this before, Joe. So, can you tell me how I will know that the wallpaper's vintage or old? Dazzle has actually the energy. Hi, Lucy. Hello. 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 I'm Mary. Hello. Nice to meet you. Where do we go upstairs? Hi, Lucy. I'm Hello. Dazzle. Nice to meet you, Dazzle. Street upstairs. Next up, mother of two, Lucy. What are you looking for? It's that light shade. Well, I think I think this area could hold something bold. And, and, and having a service where, where you have a local, you know, interior shop that says, you know, we'll source for you, is that something that would be of interest to you ongoing? God, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I haven't got the time yeah, to, yeah. to schlep around and look for something. And if I knew that I could say to somebody, go and find me something fabulous and they could do that, that'd be brilliant. Right, OK. Hi, Helen. <laughs> nice to meet you. Finally, busy theatre worker Helen. Well... What I'm, what I'm looking for, really, is something maybe like um, not a traditional computer desk as such, but maybe a writing bureau, something that I can close up, put my correspondence okay. in, keep it nice and neat and tidy. But while Denny and Dazzle are working like mad, one person is still doing very little. Dominic in the back, shuffling around in the dressing gown. It is a bit like bringing the Asmus family into your house and saying, these people are going to decorate it, you know? Okay, thank you. Okay, very much. Bye bye. Give me half on there, There are now just a few days till we reopen. Hey. Denny and Dazzle are flat out sourcing for clients and buying new and second hand pieces. I'm going to go for two of those. And this is quite in keeping, this, this um, era. They also need to learn how to rework their antiques, so they've been to see renowned restoration experts Le Pigeon Rose. Are we talking uh, this in, is in Yeah, yes. And it's mad, yeah? It's mad in yeah. And you put a bit of water in it all? Put a bit of water, and yeah. also, you know, I mix emulsions to get the colour that yeah. I want. Yeah, right, right. Given their creative flair, they throw themselves in some basic techniques. I'm no good at doing the finishes. Denny, Denny will pick it up very, very quickly. It's been a while. I feel very therapeutic doing this. It's what I like doing. But there's a huge amount left to do, and Denny's son, shop assistant Dominic, has now stopped turning up altogether. So much is riding on this. He knows we've lost a lot of money. He knows his mother's pension's gone into this. You would think. He, he would come to us. A lot of pressure, a hell of a lot of pressure. And there's only two of us. <laughs> so it'll be working like till 12 o'clock tomorrow night. With time running out, I head to the shop. Have you been getting on since I last saw you? Uh, As you know, we've put well, one down. We haven't been involved since the last time you saw him. I'm putting an awful lot of time into this and I really believe in this business, but I think this is appalling behaviour. It's appalling, it you know, it's appalling. He's just taking the piss. We've lost four or five days, yeah. which we should have been doing. I should have been doing 12, 14 hours a day preparing furniture. You tell him from me, I'm really annoyed. You tell him from me, he's lost us a week in business. He's affected all of us. So what are you going to do about it to clean this up? Well, he, he's, we're not going to employ him anymore. I don't want to be tough, but I don't think they can do this if they continue with this dysfunctional threesome. He's, he's a grown-up. I can't lead his life for him. Um, I've been doing that for years. It's time I cut the apron strings. sent some of my team in to help, but Denny and Dazzle are working day and night to meet the relaunch deadline. This is one of the last remaining shoes that Mary didn't like, so I'm thinking of giving it to her as a parting gift. <laughs> to actually restock a shop this size and do the prepare furniture and search for it, it's a major task. But at last, there is energy and excitement. I have the vision, so I know where the, the, the bits are going to go. 
it, 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 it's exciting. With the relaunch round the corner, we have to start delivering on the potential of this business. Whilst the shop is finished off, we can begin to take back the items that they sourced for their clients. And I'll finally see if they've mastered the taste levels that their customers now demand. Well, I, I hope she, she likes it, actually. I hope we've um, solved somebody's problem. That would, that would be good. It would be um, very satisfying. First up, it's Helen who wanted a writing bureau. There you go. It's really super, really lovely. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. In the future, you're looking, or you've got friends who are looking for something, would you recommend us? Oh, absolutely. I've spent months and months and months sort of trawling around and looking for that, and actually, you've got exactly what I was looking right. for. Thank you very much. Super. First sale. Our first sale. Oh, yes, first sale. <laughs> Next, we're coming back to Joe Wood's mansion to see if she's interested in the vintage wallpaper Denny has found. I'm dying to see what you found. <laughs> so much. <am I. laughs> this is an original. It's 1940s, 1940s. Yeah. and it's well original. Done. The next one is an old design. That 40s. is quite beautiful. It's stunning. That you like that one? Yeah. I think that's really beautiful. I really, really like beautiful. that one. Yeah. Yeah, those two are beautiful. I love them both. It's really yeah. That's fantastic. You did a wonderful job. They've done well, haven't they? I'm very yeah. impressed. We, we do charge a fee for the final fee. It's only £30, though. OK, that's fine. <laughs> no, that would be great. Yeah, and if there's anything else you need... No, I mean, this all, is ..or you've got friends who need something sourced... I'm gonna, I will tell all my friends now. Thank you very much. I just... I'm amazed. I honestly didn't think they'd find that. But the fact that they did shows that she's got her own taste, which, thank God, thank God. If she's going to recommend her friends, hey-ho, they're in business. We didn't charge him more than 30 quid. No, we didn't. No, look what 30... Yeah. At last, it's the morning of the relaunch. I'm optimistic. But I still have concerns. This is a really different business today. I mean, a completely different business. So I'm quite excited and I have high expectations. This is the last chance for them. You know, they've put their pension and everything into this business. If they don't get this right, then what the hell is going to happen to the pair of them? Oh, my God, what a difference. How stylish is that? I'm really excited about this one, really excited. Is anybody at home in number 37 on London Road? Hello, is that no. Mary? <laughs> How amazing is this? Two weeks of searching markets and the internet and then hours of refurbishing have given us some absolutely fantastic new merchandise. This just oozes style. Danny, what do you think? This is the first time in ten years I've actually seen stuff that I'm quite happy to change my walls at home for. <laughs> Doesn't it say something? <laughs> the change of the stock and shop is breathtaking. Did you do that? Yeah. Bloody gorgeous, right? What did you buy it at? That was um, 75 quid. What I love about this, you buy that for 75 pound, right? We're going to sell it for 500. So even if you sold that in the sale at half price, you are still making money. It's a win-win situation all the time. And that rarely happens in retail because this is down to you and your talent. Nobody can say that this is bland. I'm proud of you both. I really, really am. <laughs> We've managed to transform a bonkers, taste-free zone into a beautiful modern home store. Denny has finally clicked and swapped the glass slippers for unique, tasteful accessories. Ideal gifts which we have at the front. And the YMCA-style beds have been replaced with their upcycled and reworked furniture at the back. Time to see what Kingston thinks. Ready? Hi there. Everybody Come. in? Hi there, everybody in. Go and tell them. Go on, it's oh, open. First day of opening. Okay. <laughs>
Oh. I love it. Open up the shop. All right, you come on in then. Go on the through. It's all the way through. And within minutes, it's too full to move. Hello, hello. Good. Have a little wander around. Yeah, that's that was Denny. That's okay, huh? Lucy is back to look at the lampshade they've sourced. Now that these are all up, I thought that you might like that one there. Absolutely love that. That's brilliant. And that's £100. Perfect. And the new style shop has even drawn in multi-million selling author and local resident Jacqueline Wilson. It's digitally printed and she uses um, vintage trimmings. Very beautiful. Oh, it's like almost a tennis I forgot what to do. Today is all about putting this place on the map. So, is this a shop that will be able to stand up to the high street competition? It's a shop I have been in occasionally and almost wished I hadn't been in. I'll definitely be back now, definitely. Definitely somewhere I'll come to get sort of like a one-off individual piece, like an original that no one else is going to have. I'm, I'm amazed at the layout of everything. It's real difference. There's nothing like this here in Kingston at all. It's awesome. It's just of this time and it's gobsmacking. Well, I'm leaving you now. Oh, yeah? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm going to be running a mile. No, I'm not. No. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I have to say, I have been thoroughly entertained. <laughs> very, very, very well, you thank have. you. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Thank Good luck. luck. And I'll be ordering my cushions. All right? Good okay. luck. I want something from this shop. Hurrah! <laughs> Brilliant. Good luck, guys. Thank, thank you. you so thank much. You Take care. Bye. What it's given us is um, a new beginning to actually put effort into a business that's going forward. And that is a good feeling. I couldn't be happier, to be quite honest. I really, really am over the moon and not under it anymore. <laughs> Today, that business is an affordable, creative, unique, business that's absolutely right for customers today and how they live, how they live in their home. I'm really, really happy. I defy anyone not to find something they love in that shop. A shop selling big purchases like homewares will take a while to establish. It's still early days, but the buzz continues to grow. We're getting a percentage of new customers, it's taking time to, to them to find us. Um, it will take a little bit of time, but the new customers coming in and rave about it. It's fabulous. Yeah, you're local. Literally just round the corner. Oh, OK. It's great to see new customers come in. They absolutely love it. They think it's absolutely wonderful, and I think it's wonderful that they think it's wonderful. And they're about to receive an official seal of approval. A National Interiors magazine is devoting an entire feature to the store. Nothing like that could have ever happened when Under the Moon was Under the Moon as it was because it just wasn't working. It really wasn't working. So the trees in the back. That came out well, didn't it? That's the gosh, that came out really well. The whole ambience of the shop feels right. Every single thing points to success and... Um, you know, we're, we're really looking forward to being here for a long, long time. Don't stop thinking about tomorrow. Don't a church is for life, not just for Christmas or when you're trying to get your child into the school. Brand new comedy next here on BBC Two in Rev.